welcome to lecture 18. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss uh, the visioning uh, for a city. In the last lecture, we discussed the management of change and we have seen that the various processes are involved in the managing change for the urban governance uh, like creating team, identifying the projects, identifying the programs, uh, giving the training to the team, um, uh, making a vision and monitoring and assessment. So, out of that exercise we have seen that the visioning is a very important part when a change takes place in any organization including the urban governments. Now, uh, how to uh, make those vision? Uh, so, that we will discuss in today's lecture. So, mostly our lecture will confine today in that what is a city vision, uh, what is the role of leadership in creating vision and what are the steps and stages to build up a vision. Now, I start the discussion with this question that do you really need a city vision? What do you think? Uh, and, and what could be a form of a city vision? It is not an individual person's vision or a family vision or a, uh, or a small institution's vision. A city is comprising of uh, lakhs of population and what can be a city vision? Now, before I discuss and answer this question, I would like to show some pictures for uh, so that you can understand. Now, see this photographs. This is the photographs of a city from Brazil. Uh, the name of the city is Curitiba. Some of you might have heard about these cities. Till 70s, these cities were uh, like any other cities in India or in uh, Southeast Asia and after that they started uh, making changes in the cities. So, this picture shows the central areas how they have uh, improved the uh, transportation and built environment. Next picture you can see this. This is one of the central place in city of the Curitiba which they started in the beginning to make the whole central place as a pedestrianized uh, area. So, it is the central area of city of Curitiba. It is famous for pedestrianization. Let us see another picture. Now, in this picture you can see that uh, some uh, system of the public transportation with using bus and some tube system with uh, fantastic um, uh, place making using the uh, seatings and other uh, uh, elements in the street, street furnitures. Uh, it is also from the Curitiba uh, city and this is another picture from the uh, Curitiba. The city of Curitiba they created, they could create enormous amount of uh, green spaces in the city. Another picture you can see that from a uh, very congested and uh, not so designed and planned township, uh, they have created this kind of city. Now, this person, Jim Lanner is the person behind this transformation and he was the mayor of the city of Curitiba for three times and as a uh, occupation he was a uh, town planner and he uh, changed this city from uh, a earlier uh, congested and not so good city from a green and sustainable city. Now, this shows the effect of a vision and the vision what a person as a leader can see uh, or foresee another 10 years, 20 years, 30 years and take the people with him and the community groups with him, the municipal structures with him and envision them and make a uh, combined and shared vision and implement that. That is the only way how we can transfer, uh, transform and change our cities. So, that is why I, uh, I, I, I showed these pictures just to answer that question, do you near, really need a vision? Yes, we really need a vision if and provided if we want to have a change in our cities towards the uh, better, uh, better and progressive and a sustainable and green um, cities. So, that is the answer of the whether we need a city vision or not. Now, the question is what is a city vision? Is it a uh, is it a document? Is it a uh, is it a uh, is it a poetry? Or how we make the city vision? Now, uh, the city vision is basically a collective wish to grow and make a better future. So please see the term that collective wish. It is not the wish or a for a particular single individual person. It is the aspirations for greater quality of the lives. So. It is the people's aspirations what they want to be 
for another 10 years or 20 years. Then it is the sharing of the common dream. There are various groups in the city, there are various uh, communities in the city. So, what is the shared common dream across all age group, across all uh, communities? That is what a vision is and making and contributing some good for our child. So, it is not only the vision for our own life or our own generation, it is also to make, to visualize a city and make a plan or make a roadmap for our ch children's or the future um, generation, right. So, this is the vision altogether and a roadmap for policy and development. And after all this, it is a roadmap what we make because this roadmap basically takes the present to future. So, this is the roadmap. So, basically vision gives a roadmap uh, what, what we aspire, so what we dream for our city. Now, you can see what is the vision process. So, basically vision process involves certain stages, one is plan, second is participation, prepare, present and publish. So, if you follow the plan means you plan uh, and participate and make people participate with your uh, discussion and the workshop. So, in the plan you make the purpose that is the object that is the uh, goal where the city wants to be and city goes to uh, wants to reach and then you make the people participation so that you can consult and make the group discussion so that you can make a shared and the common um, um, goal and then prepare. So, if you have uh, a multiple uh, community, multiple words, multiple uh, areas and multiple groups, so working with them, discussing with them, making various kinds of uh, vision statement and compiling them is important. So, compiling them in a precise short statement is also important that is the third step and then you have to present them again to the citizens and the population for the feedback and then publish in your public domain like websites and the print medias. So, that people also get to know the investors, the outside world, the funding agency, the common citizens everybody will get to know from the uh, publication. In short, it is the it is the 5 P which is the process which is the process for the vision that is plan, participation, prepare, present and publish. Next, how to write a vision? Now, I told that a vision must be a clear and simple language. It should not have a jargon, it should not have a, a very uh, complicated words, it should be very simple, clear so that everybody can understand starting from a uh, child to a uh, older person, starting from a um, just literate person to a uh, uh, very uh, erudite person. So, that is what we is required to write a vision. It should not have any ambiguity or jargon. In the meaning or in the statement, there should not be any ambiguity or the confusion of the meaning. It should use the short sentences instead of large sentences. Sentences. It should be thematic. The vision should not give any specific prescription. It is a thematic and broad uh, statement and it should represent the collective aspirations for people, land and resources. It is not the representation of only one person, it is a collective aspirations for people, land and resources. When we talk about the resources, it is also the environmental resources, people, land and the natural resources. In comparison to the vision, when you write objective for a planning or a governance or any kind of exercise, objectives are quite different. I would like to sh share that some of the lectures I might have discussed the attributes of the objective, it must be specific, measurable, attainable or achievable, reasonable and time bound. In short, it is smart. So, you can understand that how objectives are different from a vision. So, objects are, are different in vision in the following category. So, vision is a broad statement of collective wi wish objective whereas is smart that is specific, measurable, achievable, reasonable and time bound. Vision is crisp, it should be written in shorter sentences, objective is many and thematic, vision is leading to make scenarios, 
objective basically leads to the programs and projects. The objective of writing objective is to implement some project. Part of the policy and plan documents, the vision is a part of plan document and the policy and it have significant amount of public consultation which is essential. And objectives also a part of uh, 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 a plan document and it also has a public consultation, but the amount of the discussion and the consultation for the objectives definitely will be larger uh, than the uh, vision exercise. So, clearly you can understand that difference between the objective and vision. Broadly vision can be created for a city, objectives can be created for each and every themes, each and every projects and programs. Now, we come to the examples. Now, I have just taken from the vision of how we write from IIT Roorkee the vision statement. Please read the lines very carefully. The vision statement of IIT Roorkee says that to be the fountainhead of new ideas and innovations in science and technology and continue to be a source of pride for all Indians. So, it is very please follow the description what I had in the last few slides that it is a precise uh, description crisp using simple and clear uh, language without any ambiguity and jargons. And please see the, uh, the, the key words like ideas, innovations, science and technologies. So, you can see that it is the, it is the areas of work. This is the dream or the aspiration, aspirations and this is the aspirations and new ideas and, and innovations is the, is the theme what is embedded here. So, if you carefully follow this statement, you will understand all the parameters required to write a crisp vision. Then let us see another vision statement from a urban sector. Now, this is the vision for Ahmedabad city. I have taken from the their official websites of the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation. So, again I request all of you to read very carefully. It is written like that. The vibrant, productive, harmonious, sustainable and environmental friendly clean and livable city having a responsive local government offering its citizens a good quality of life. So, if you follow the words vibrance, productive, harmonious, sustainable and environmental friendly clean and livable city, these are all aspirations and, and dream what we want to create and this our theme which will take our uh, ourselves to the dream and these are our aspirations that is to achieve the better quality of life for the common citizens. So, this is how we write uh, the vision statement for any city. Please see your city or in your organization where you are working that what is the vision statement written over there. Apart from the vision statement, in some of the organization they write also the mission statements. The mission statements are basically little descriptive statement uh, which comes after the vision and which gives a particular description of the uh, thematic, um, uh, uh, thematic mission and the roadmap. So, I am not going into the, that detail, but definitely you can check your organization's uh, visions and mission statement. Now, in every visioning exercise, the leadership is important. In the beginning, we started with the leadership. So, there is a distinct uh, uh, difference between the leadership and the management. So, management puts more emphasis on this formal systems, processes and rewards and incentives, where leadership pays attention to integrity, to ability to inspire, self-awareness, courage to innovate and values and vision. So, you can understand the management of any organization, it considers formal systems, processes, rewards and incentives. For urban government, it is the all the existing systems and processes which actually runs the office, it will come under the management, but leadership is something which 
shows the direction of the growth of the city and the organization which uh, which uh, which has this um, attributes like integrity inspiration self awareness courage values and vision now let's see what are the stages of the transforming uh, your organizations and taking a vision there are eight stages which is uh, listed in various uh, literatures i would like to show those stages the first establishing a sense of urgency the first thing in this is a common uh, uh, phenomenon then that it can be applicable for organization or it can be applicable for individual and group also if there is not a not any pain which is felt by any individual or group or community or city there is no way out for the solution so there should be a sense of urgency to create something new to do something new so that is the first stage so it is not only the feeling you have to establish that feeling that we need to change we need to do something we need to take a broad vision for the city second so forming a powerful and guiding coalition now a city everybody every individual every group every city or organization they have some areas where they are strong that is their the strength and there are areas where they do not have those kind of strength and they have their weakness so the method is if they form the coalition with other parties it is become it is it it, it becomes possible to 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 further strengthen their uh, activities and jump to the new areas and new projects for to achieve the vision so that is what is required then you create a joint vision the shared vision with the people with the organizations with the group etc and communicating the vision it may not be possible that the process which you have followed during the creating of the vision through the workshops and discussions and the consultations that each and every people may not know the vision uh, what the out uh, the ultimate outcome is so it is your duty as a city manager to to communicate the vision to each and every level of the governance to the common people citizens the community group the functionaries and outside agency next is empowering others to act now in this whole scenario you have to empower the common citizen the groups the functionaries the people who are working at the local level by uh, making rules and regulation by delegating the power by giving financial uh, um, um, uh, financial delegation that is what you can do to empower and to take more responsibility to act planning for and creating short term wins so once you delegate something to the people or the or the community let them win let them achieve some short term win so that they can also become proud to uh, for their own work or one own action so that is what is required from the city managers and the leadership to delegate the power to empower them and to give them an opportunity give them an uh, then uh, an opportunity and a uh, and the time to create the short term wins because long term wins or long term achievement of the goals may take long time sixth consolidating improvements and the producing change so once you get some amount of change and the improvement and the uh, changes you consolidate that change and continue that change for some time so that you can uh, earn a long term changes then institutionalize the new approach once you have established a long term change and you have achieved significant amount of work or significant amount of changes in terms of service delivery in terms of planning then you institutionalize by making rules regulations plan document by validating through the government agency the new approaches so that in your absence the coming generations they also follow, follow the changing process because in the last lecture i told that change is such a process it is not an one time process it is a cyclic process and comprehensive process so next generation also need to be given an opportunity to continue the uh, the the changing process and the visioning process so in short it is uh, this eight stages what need to be uh, considered i just again uh, uh, repeat for you it is the establishing a sense of urgency forming a guiding coalition creating a vision communicating the vision planning for and creating short term wins empowering others consolidating the improvements and institutionalization new approach so please follow these changes 
if you want to uh, be part of any change process and be part of a visioning exercise. So, this visioning exercise or this basic stages will enable you to, uh, to, to take action in a visioning exercise in your organization and the cities. So, with this um, I would like to conclude today's lecture. In today's lecture we, we started the lecture with the question that do we really need a vision for a city, then we showed some of the pictures and the examples of the city Curitiba just for an instance and just to make you thinking about the vision and we have seen that in last 30, 40 years the city of Curitiba because of its uh, leadership and visioning uh, and visionary actions they could change the city from a very inferior condition to a uh, renowned city green and sustainable city in today's context. Then we shared that for vision what are the essential parameters or the attributes of the vision, how to write a vision. We showed uh, that vision statement should be a clear and simple language, it should be written in the crisp language without any ambiguity and the jargon vision statement should have a direct message and it should be thematic so that and it should be a broad and it should give a, a dream and the aspiration of the people when we talk about our municipal government. And then we have seen that they what are the stages of the visioning exercise. The stages starts from the urgency, need for the urgency making vision and in the last making the institutionalization, institutionalization of the new approach. So, 8 stages are, the, they are there. So, please uh, read all the uh, necessary documents and the references I will share, so that you can understand the visioning exercise. Now, in this note I would like to say that we have started this week's discussion from the management of change reform and now we have discussed visioning. Now, the moment as a city manager you are making a change in your organization or in a development, you will find that it is not so easy because the moment the changes or the need for the changes, changes are established, there are differences of the opinion, differences of the interest. So, there will be conflicts. So, how to manage those conflicts in a change management as a leader and a city manager that I will discuss in the next lecture which is lecture number 19. So, for attending to the, today's lecture, I thank you very much.